sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. I just choked down chocolate chip cookies and grandpa's femur. Fem- fem- femur. Did we make money, mon- mon- money now? <laughs> no, we had to pay So down. this episode, it's just like, too slippery. I, I'm slicing everything. <laughs> Every time I swing my five iron, it goes up that guy's ass. <laughs> 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 Welcome to the Sad Dads Club podcast. Here's your host, Jim and Boo. Upside down hot air balloons. Just, <laughs> <laughs> just half inflated hot air balloons. Yeah, naked bats with a hairless bat with like a rock in one end of it. Yeah, <laughs> like a Keystone <laughs> pipeline with two, two hot air balloons <laughs> upside down. Two of them just swinging around, pounding away. <laughs> Format the pack media. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Hey, uh, welcome to the show, everybody. Welcome to the Sad Dads Club podcast. It is Wednesday, and I am Jim. I am the Foo, and I'm also running for president of the United States. This should be interesting. Yeah. Will you uh, be able to beat Kanye? He dropped out. He already? Yeah. <laughs> How did I miss that? Uh, there were way other the, more important conversations yeah. happening. Okay, he's got a fucking album. Oh, he's it was that what all he was trying to do was promote oh, an album. Yeah, uh, although he's on the uh, I just saw that's at, what I would expect from at the him, end though. of day business. He uh, there was a press, he's on the Oklahoma ballot as an independent. Oh boy, but that's pretty much it. Hmm. So well, I would be happy to see him run just so he could waste a bunch of his money. Yeah, I feel like that's what it would. But be. he got fucking that's our money. He got PPP loans. For his fucking Yeezy company or whatever. Well, you don't think that Trump used his own money when he ran? He did. Well, there you go. I mean, you got to supplement it. Right, but he's got tax-supplemented loans as, like, bailout stuff. For he, for what, his business Kanye, yeah. Oh. He, like, applied for, I can't remember. Well, it's a loan then, right? He still has to pay it back. It is, but (laughs) it's in his pocket, not in ours. Yeah, but, I mean. Anyway. Spend some of that Stay tuned for the end of the episode for my uh, candidacy uh, (laughs) updates. I want to see the press release. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I would just like to start out by saying thank you to Natalie Sampson. Yes. For the blueberry almond fuck yeah cake. That's the new name. Yeah, the tub. Tub (laughs) Tub. of caramel sauce. Like, no joke, tub. Yeah. Like, I. The little glad. uh, I may have been able to fill my pool in the backyard with the tub of caramel sauce. Yeah. And film porn with it. Uh, I'm not saying I did. I'm just saying. Thumbs up. I may have. And like and subscribe. For the uh, <laughs> that's where he just drop caramel tub drop, horn. Well, I'm out. I'm, yeah, yeah, that's it. I got anyway, nothing else. Thanks for tuning in for episode 95. Jim's got a porn out <laughs> in a tub of caramel yeah. sauce. Well, no thanks. Well, no thanks to Natalie, but thanks to Natalie. Yes, no, the porn is no thanks to Natalie, but thanks to Natalie for the. Uh, it was amazing. Super delicious. The, the kids in Venus left Thursday. What was it? It might have been Wednesday. I don't know. I don't know. My, you don't tell me everything. My week was off. And that's okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, it had to have been Wednesday. Uh, see, I don't know. I don't even know when they left. That's how much time has fucking escaped me. How, how much time has elapsed? Anyway, I mean, you uh, figure I wh- ate the whole thing <laughs> on my own, and I was trying to pace myself because I'm like, because I remember the first one. The first one I shared. Yeah. And like it was like, oh, you should try this. It's really good. And yeah. she had the sauce on it Mm -hmm. and we split that one it was a single bread pan yep uh you got half i got half yep and it was like fuck it this went too fast yeah this was the kids are gone venus is gone and she was awesome enough that she sent her husband her labor (laughs) i mean to deliver us each our own bread pans i'm not even sure if we're still friends with dave we might just have to be friends with. i would have I will continue to have Dave on as long as <laughs> the, he schleps down his wife's the amazing still appears his bread cake. Well, that's a prerequisite now. Yeah. If oh, you're coming to the show, Dave. Well, you know what you need to do. Yeah. If if you don't show up with cakes and treats from from Natalie, then we're gonna have problems. I'm, cakes at a minimum. Yeah. Other I, treats are just a bonus. We'll just send you home. I'm, I know it's a long <laughs> drive, but you can get fucking in and out. 
That's yeah. On your way home. Yeah. That's a long way for In and Out. Well, Chick fil A, because it'll be still open when you leave because you didn't bring anything. So you can still go to Chick fil A. Will they? Well, Is, do they yeah. open late? Well, they're open till nine, but if we oh. le- boot oh, if we turn here, his ass around yeah, at like he, seven o'clock, he'll be ready to go to Chick Fil A. Yeah, you won't have to go to. That's a long way to go for Chick Fil A, but they don't have that shit in Auburn. <laughs> it's like Chick or Grass Valley, awesome, almost. No, no, no. Anyway, uh, it was really good. Yes, I ate the whole fucking thing myself. I feel a little bit sad about <laughs> my waste about it. But somewhere like two or three days in, you were like, I'm pounding it and I'm using two scoops of caramel sauce. And I'm like, well, I don't feel guilty then because. (laughs) Well, I would slice off a hunk and put it on a plate. Yeah. And then two scoops, two spoonfuls of the caramel sauce and I would just drizzle it on there and then I would eat it. And it was. Yeah. Did you refrigerate your caramel sauce? Oh, hell no. Okay, good. No. Because <laughs> it would, Cause it I would want... pour a lot easier <laughs> and scoop a lot heavier. Oh, God. If you left it at just on the counter. Yeah, I didn't heat it up or anything or the nope. caramel sauce or the cake. No, nope. no. Nope. Just took a hunk out, peeled back the thing. Yep. Sliced a hunk out, yep. put it on a plate. And just ate like drizzled, a fat fucking piggy. And then just fucking, <laughs> yeah, it was like all of the weight that I lost, I, I'm pretty sure I gained some. Yeah, I shoveled it. <laughs> shoveled it into my face hole. Yeah. It was really good. Although I didn't eat the entire one myself. I don't think I even sent a picture to Venus. I think I told her about it, but oh. I didn't send her a picture because yeah. I didn't want to feel guilty about eating the whole thing. Because she'd be, she'd get back and be like, "Although no. you ate the whole thing? Yeah. Fuck. She's like, you didn't save me any. I'm like, fuck. I'm sorry. Well, that combo. Well, I hope the beach was nice. Blueberry and almonds with yeah. the caramel I sauce. wouldn't be too sad if there was more blueberries i would have uh but the it was really good i'm that's it just happy that something was given to us yeah i mean that's awesome well i can't thank her enough given so the between the two of them (laughs) that's true right that is the other thing we'd like to talk about right we um kind of were able to ask for a donation right uh, from the company that I work from. Which has no relevance to Dave actually showing up. No, actually. Out of the kindness of his heart and Dave, the company itself. We had a conversation the first first show he was here, after the show, and he asked, how could he help? And he kind of like reaching for the wallet. How can I help you guys out? And we right. were like- We were both like, whoa. Well, uh, we don't, no, I mean- We don't have anything I, like that set up. We don't have a Patreon and we don't, you know, we don't have any sponsors. We just kind of do this. Right. And uh, so it's like, we don't, you know, it doesn't cost us a lot every month, but, you know, right. whatever. And uh, he was kind of, you could tell he was a little bit like, um, But okay. I'd like to do something. Yeah. Right. So then um, we lost footage of Dave <laughs> uh, for the YouTube channel, which was sad. Right. Um, and so I was like, hey, I oddly work for the same company as Dave. It happens to be this video company that right. makes lots of video gear. Mm-hmm. And so I pinged him and was just basically said, hey, you asked if you could help. And we said, eh. And then we we're like, lost some footage. And what we really need is some right. some gear that's reliable. And we've kind of kicked this around before because obviously yeah. y- you and who you work for, we, you yeah. know, we know. Yeah. So it's you know, AV broadcasting, whatnot. Yeah. But when we like kick around like, oh. Wouldn't it be cool? Wouldn't it be cool if. Yeah. And you start making out like the Christmas list of stuff. And how much money of it's that ex- gear is. It's expensive. And yeah. for us, it's overkill. It's like shotgun to kill a mosquito kind of thing. Yes, it is. But uh, for our workflow and yeah. this podcast uh, in how some of your products, the AJA products work, it reduces uh, workflow time. Yes. Uh, there's at least a couple steps that are pulled out due to how things are formatted and how things are exported. And how from. was that for you? Uh, you uh, for those not in the know, uh, Jason does vi- edit the YouTube video and put it together and upload So it, it was, um, the processing I think still stays the same, hmm. but as far as um, a sequence of steps, mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, it's simpler because yeah. there's the there's a couple steps that are removed because you're not importing and having something else. You don't uh, have to transcode it, right? Yeah. Um. So it's slightly simplified because I'm starting off like further in the race instead yeah. of a hundred yard dash. Uh, I get to start at the twenty five yard mark, right. As opposed to everyone else, 
but it's still a hundred yard dash. Mm-hmm. Um, Just it, different workflow. It, it, you don't have to wait. It for was sli- stuff. it was simpler. It yeah. was slightly simpler yeah. uh, as far as compute time. Um, probably negligible. Yeah. Um, but well, there was less steps to go wrong. That's the thing is when you transcode. Uh, so the stuff we used to do was H.264 files, and you bring that into say Final Cut Pro to do editing and Final Cut Pro will transcode that to its native ProRes. And so that once it's transcoded into ProRes, you're editing in ProRes. But essentially what we're getting is files that start at ProRes. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to transcode on the front end and they're less compressed because they're starting out at ProRes. So you're dealing with a higher quality file to begin with. Right. um, Which gives you more leeway of what you can do with the files. So we have this going now. Right. And a lot of this is relative to how we kind of juggle, as far as a podcast goes, we juggle not just the audio portion, uh, we juggle uh, the an, an audio and a video uh, production production on yeah. the, uh, for our YouTube. We used to, the first five to 10 episodes, mm-hmm. we did just an audio export to YouTube. Uh, but as far as like a creative and hobby function, we have the Osmo Pockets that do that. We started using as far as the video portion. We're like, ah, it's something to tinker with, yeah, and whatnot. Uh, I have no complaints about the Osmos. No, they've been uh, good. They've been amazing products, and we we use them as backups. Yep. Uh, for the video production, anyway. Right. Uh, so this was something that we started to run into as far as like, well, it would be nice if like mm-hmm. a wish list thing. Relative to us recording, and you probably hearing this on iTunes or Google Podcasts or whatever, uh, it has no probably no relevance to you. Right. But if you're a person that ingests us from the YouTube thing and you watch us there, yep. uh, you may notice that uh, perhaps, I, you know, I'm not too sure. If I'm being honest, I don't know if the... Google machine would give you the gives you a better picture, a 1080 better 1080p picture than than the Osmos do. Yeah, but like I said, from a work workflow perspective, and a dad and a full time employee, uh, it it's a couple extra steps that are removed, and I can't thank Dave and and the company AJA enough for. For donating what they have. Yeah, so thank you, Dave, for making that happen. We're excited. We got it up and running. Actually, right, last and there's a ton of new as far as, I mean, we're yeah. all, you know, we're ebbing and flowing in between quarantine stuff anyway. So this yeah. has been like a, something to help, uh, like tickle the mind as far as trying something new, yeah. dabbling in a space that's not my own. For you, this is probably... Close to work. Right, <laughs> right. But for me, yeah. in setting up the equipment, this is all net new learning stuff for oh, me. Yeah, and yeah. it's, so it's, uh, you know, just trying to stay sharp. As and far you're as like, I don't know how to do that. And I'm like, oh, come on, right. bro. Yeah, you know, dude, dude. You don't know how to do I that? Get, I get paid for this one. <laughs> come on, come on now. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, we have a new way to get video into the into our editing system and that is great thank you very much Dave for the donation right we appreciate it and thanks AJ video for right. sure thank you um, and we, Natalie for the cake and Natalie for the, the cake. bread cakes it's kind of a cake it's a cake I've called it bread but I, I almost I prefer think it's to a cake. call it cake I think it's a cake because it's not like f- fruit bread no. I would call it a cake. I, a cake in a bread shape. Like I said, that was the blueberry almond fuck yeah. Yeah. So if it she was doesn't really start good. calling it that. But don't send down fruitcake because I would, <laughs> I would rather blueberry. <laughs> she just sends down like the fruitcake someone else gave her last year. She's like. I'm actually oh, kind they of want curious something? now thinking about it. Like, will she switch it up every time? Like, like a like, different flavor? Like next time do we get, a for the alien walnut? show, do we get some sort of. Here's a banana. Yeah. Um, pecan. Yeah. I don't. I don't. Know. Whatever. I'll eat it. Fuck it. <laughs> if it comes with the bucket of caramel sauce, fucking tub. 
<laughs> Whatever. Yeah, like a like a five gallon Home Depot. Well, I had bucket. so much caramel sauce left over. I started eating it with the apples too. I'm like, uh, I just uh, what's left? I just I'm was alone. Like I can't it right do anything out of there. weird with it. <laughs> I was just eating it right out of there. Just, no, I'm kidding. Really? Oh, no. Jesus. Oh, good God, like, no. Uh, hi. Welcome no, to diabetes. No, I mean, I'm actually <laughs> trying not to eat that way, so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't not eat the cake. Yeah. Like so. I said, I felt a little bit bad, like, dietary-wise. I'm like, well, I mean, I've been pretty good, so I figured I'm for- I'm going to eat a salad for lunch so I can eat the rest of the cake. <laughs> I figured for whatever time it takes to get rid of this cake, because it's that good, Yeah. that I will just have to do that. That is my duty. Yeah. Because it's, del- I'll, I'll I couldn't do not do it. More push ups or something just to make sure the cake gets offset. Extra wa- walking extra fast. That's and for how sure. long did it last you? Just to wrap mm. that up. Mine lasted till Sunday. I, I was going to post something like on Monday or Tuesday. I think like, Sunday morning, I think I ate the last piece. Did you? Yeah, because I think we were talking about. Was it no? It was Saturday because I think we I were ate mine about last it. Sunday. Yes, because we made a joke. I'm like, yeah, I yeah. saved enough so that way after the yeah. shenanigans well, on Saturday, I had something to treat myself well, with. I figured I would have whatever hunk was left, and when I went to go get that hunk, half of that hunk was gone, <laughs> and I was like, "What the fuck happened to the half of the hunk?" And my wife's like, "I fifty percent, motherfucker." Yeah, she's like, "We've been married a long time, Jim." Yeah. And so Do you see the this, ring? It's contractual, yeah. 50%. Remember when you sung Beyonce, be, ring on it or something? Put. And then I was like. Put, put the cock ring on it? <laughs> yeah. Is that her song? I or mean, is it Lemonades? Oh, God. I don't know. I don't even anyway. know. Anyway. But anyway, so let's get those out of the way. Yeah. Thank you all. and Thank you very much to the both of you. Yes. Same family, oddly enough. Yeah. Same address. Yeah. Weird. It's, do you think she rolls around in the tractor out back? I don't know. Whatever it takes in Penn Valley. Well, I guess we have questions for Dave when he comes back. Yeah. Does your wife mow your lawn? My wife doesn't mow mine. I, I think my wife has maybe mowed the yard at my house twice. Were you there? I think it was a situation where I had hurt my back real bad and I couldn't move. And you just kind of like threw gasoline at her and went, like, go <laughs> no, mow the lawn. No, and it might, even it could have been Chandler, but I know I remember seeing her push the mower at some point, I think. I don't know. It, maybe it was a dream, and that's possible too, because sad dad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. The, but, the, you know. Sweep the floor and mow the lawn, bitch. Not that what? I'm not affected by all the dust and crap when oh, you mow. Oh, yeah. That stuff really gets me, but it really affects yeah. her. Um, so... I don't expect that her to do that, and, but Chandler will every once in a while hop out there and do it. Well, he's young and spry. No, well, he has and a not, fucked up back now. Oh, yeah. Broken, broken <laughs> spry? He's a broken... Sad son? <laughs> he's a sad... Oh, man. I mean, ever since that rear ender he got into... Back a me. Yeah. And I think he was in prison when that happened. Yeah. <laughs> No, but he yeah, he had that rear ender like about a year and a half ago and uh in this work truck and his back it's is right. I saw him like Freudian or not Freudian, but like subconsciously Did he do that? A couple times. Yeah. At he, the uh polka dot. Mm-hmm. Like doing he went to acupuncture yesterday. Really? Mm-hmm. Um, how'd that go? Uh he's had a few, I think. Three really? or, three or four different times. Does it seem to work? He does it. I assume he would. I don't know if he's just like. Have you ever done that? No. I've always like wondered. I mean, I don't have aches they and drive pains. Spikes so. into you all over. No, That's, you know. I know. Oh. Do, do, do. I know. I have never done it. Really? No. Is it expensive? Does he talk about the cost? It's or? covered by insurance. I think. Really? I don't know. I have like so many questions. I don't. Know. I don't know anyone that's done it. I guess uh, you talk to me about they it. come in. So he goes in and he has to take his clothes. I don't know about all of his clothes, but he has to take some of his clothes Certainly off. Certainly his top know. if they're going. Yeah. And then he lays down and I think it's like a almost Zen kind of an experience kind of thing where they have like, it's lit a certain way for relaxation mm-hmm. and that kind of stuff. And then they like put the needles in you, however many they do. It's like, a, I don't know if they have a set amount for mm-hmm. his Right. His thing or not. And then and then they just literally say, lay here for 20 minutes or half an hour, whatever right. it is. And then they leave the room and he's just in there 
Yeah. And uh, I picture it a lot like, you know, like a masseuse or massage. There's yeah. a, uh, an environment, peacefulness kind of thing. Yeah. The, yeah. You know, a level that's, of lighting. Yeah, that's... Like fucking environmental thunder. I mean, as far light. as I know, there's no, like, funny business, no. right? But After acupuncture, <laughs> you want the uh, full <laughs> Exactly. No. Yeah, no, no, I don't think there's any of that. No. But, uh... You poke me? And I think he has to drive pretty far. I think it's... I think he has to go to, like, Rancho or something. That's, really? Yeah, way, way the hell down there. I wouldn't even know where to go. But I'm curious, to, like, to know if it works. Like, well, it'll remind me to ask him later. Yeah, um, I, he's talked about it a little bit, and I forget all the details, but because it could be like one of those like ASMR things, where as long as it doesn't hurt, and you just want someone to like rub you. Well, I think that basically he says that you feel something, but you don't really feel it, or so, I don't know. Yeah, but I wouldn't think that he would continue to go if it didn't make a Do difference. Something, yeah. You know, if it wasn't if it wasn't helping or positive, mm-hmm. then he wouldn't bother. I would think so. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, but uh, so he's been doing that. But yeah, his back is. I mean, he probably needs surgery of some kind. And on to be all honest, there. That's weird because he still we, has. We a, did some serious shenanigans on Saturday. He still has a lawsuit pending from it. Really? Yeah, because it was a state I worker that all... plowed him. No. They deny. It. They deny. Really? Oh yeah. They just sh- totally deny it on the first claim altogether. They oh just, wow! And then he, they have to like resubmit paperwork, and then they, oh, you are didn't we going a, on like a year? A year and a half. Oh wow! Yeah, I know. I was just telling him the other day. I'm like, you need to get in contact with your lawyer and find out what the fuck is going on. Right. Like, what is happening? Is anything happening? Are you doing is anything? something? Anything? Is there? Are we missing deadlines of some kind? Mm-hmm. I don't know. So, I mean, he's 23, so I figure he can. <laughs> right. If it's important to him, and I uh, s- suspect that he would get some kind of settlement out of it, but if it's important to him, he'd that follow he would, up accordingly. He would follow up to accordingly. Make sure. Exactly. Booker gets paid. Yeah. Compensated accordingly. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm. Anyway. So, um, did you say something about a scale? Because I thought that was weird out of nowhere. Oh, uh, that's after show. Oh, that's after show yeah. thing? Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Well, hey, I went to high school with this guy. <clears throat> okay. Um, he was a little older than I was. I'm not sure even what grade he was in. I remember him, but not much. Don't know him. He probably wouldn't know me. Um, but he did go to my school. Okay. Um, he was friends also with my brother. Okay. Uh, but Brian Posehn, um, my, it's funny because we, we see him all the time in different movies and TV shows. Yes. He's he's, like a, he always plays B or C tier, like guest guy, comic relief filler. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's in the wedding singer, for instance, he's at the nerd table, that one, uh, wedding sequence they do. That's Uh, the Adam Sandler one. yes. Yes. Okay. Um, and then he's been in countless other TV shows. He's a writer. He's a stand-up yeah. comedian, blah, blah, blah. But my, <laughs> so we've been following his career forever just because we've known him. Um, and he kind of grew up doing stand-up comedy around here in Sacramento. But he has a book out, and I didn't know this. I don't even know how, when this book was published, but I'm going to end up reading it. Okay. Um, but my daughter and wife were at the Dollar Tree and ran across his book at the Dollar Tree for a dollar. Does it actually say how much it is on the back? It was like ISBN 25 number? bucks or something. But it's there for a dollar. $26 wow. on the inside cover. And I've started kind of reading it. And it's funny. It just reads like you're having a conversation with him. The other thing that was funny too, uh, which was regarding him in particular, was he was just recently on uh, uh, America's Worst Cooks or whatever, worse, worse, there's a show called Worst Cooks. Okay. And it's got Ann Bur- Burrell and... Uh, uh, Ann Burrell. She's the bleach blonde, yes. short hair... Uh, She's on it. ...cooking channel lady. Yeah. Okay. And uh, they have a couple, a couple of the other guys that are on Food Network are on there. Um, they kind of swap them out. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was one of the guys that was doing the competition. And when they have a celebrity... Um, 
a celebrity version of the show, mm-hmm. the money they earn goes towards a charity, which okay. is kind of cool. But he just was the first guy kicked off because he's just very slow when he does it. And uh, what was he he's cooking? just a funny guy. Um, well, they do challenges and stuff. So they have they have a whole bunch of people on that are all B list, C listers, mm-hmm. and uh, sometimes they have A list people, but not very often. But they do challenges, so it's like they'll show them how to like cook something, and then they have to like take go notes, nuts, and replicate, then cook. yeah, kind okay. of that kind of thing, or make us your signature dish, kind of a th- stuff. And uh, so they did that kind of stuff. But he was the first guy to let go from the show, which is funny because. I kind of expected that just because of who he is and how he... So having not not known, uh-huh. right? So you had the book on the table before we started the show. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's wearing a Star Wars shirt. Oh, yeah. He's a huge nerd. So it's it's funny because I'm like, oh, okay, him and Pat Oswalt are like both Star Wars yeah, nerds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I was in a... I just finished... Um, so if you're a Star Wars nerd like I am... Uh, they had just re-released on Disney Plus the the new Disney streaming service. They, yeah. uh, I don't know, month or so in, in conjunction with the Mandalorian release, they also released the Star Wars Clone Wars cartoon series, the oh. last, the season seven. And if you're not a, a haven't sp- been watching it, it is a it's a it's the space in between. What you would know if you're not a Star Wars you're fan. Gonna, you're going to lose me here a little bit. The prequel stuff between the second episode and the... Uh, um, so it's before Anakin Skywalker becomes Darth Vader. Okay. And it's about them fighting droids. Did you just droids. like ruin something for somebody? <laughs> yeah, probably. Hashtag sorry, spoilers. <laughs> wow. <laughs> sorry. Uh, Sorry. So it's that space in between that happens wh- how he becomes. Uh, so it's a whole bunch of fighting, but it's essentially like uh, gives you a serious amount of backstory about the stormtroopers, mm-hmm. like uh, how they were, what they were, and how they came to be. Okay. Um, there is a like the Mandalorian. Uh, there is a ton of story, lore, and stuff. If you're I find it lacking probably in the last three movies that have come out mm-hmm. um, because I don't think they were run by the same guy. Yeah. Uh, the same Dave Filoni runs, is part of, and has his hands in the cartoon series, the Star Wars Rebels, Star Wars Clone Wars, and the Mandalorian series. And he is a uber i mean if there if you were to whack george lucas off the face of the planet uh-huh. dave filoni could fill in just pick up where he left off and he would know like the mindset and where george wanted to go with like the history of star yeah. wars so he runs these the amount of the stories that they tell and the way that they tell it in the the cartoon yeah and that's what makes it weird as being as an adult and yet a fan of the series the way that dave tells the stories in the Clone Wars almost makes you feel guilty that you're watching cartoons, but it's so in-depth like The Mandalorian. So it's a it's on par with the regular Star Wars series storytelling. Yes. But in a cartoon form. It is. Is that what you're I saying? I would say it's even better. I would really? say if you're a fan of how they tell the story in The Mandalorian. Yeah. The Clone Wars cartoon and the Star Wars Rebels cartoon are closer to depth and character development of The Mandalorian than they are even of the actual Star Wars movies. Absolutely mind-blowing in depth. Probably because they have more time to tell the stories. Could be. Yeah. Could be. Where a film is a film and you only have X amount of time. Uh, So seeing him with the Star Wars, so there was a recent, there was a funny thing. Just recently, there was a uh, a video game guy who was talking about um, this leads into Destiny, but there's a and and sad daddings. Oddly enough, there, it's a funny thing. Both. So, uh, someone was mentioning Gray Jedi, and it's essentially the space in between the the shades of gray uh, in between you, your dark side and your your Jedi. So you have your Sith and your your Jedi. And they follow these two polarized like if you're not 
here, then you're there. Yeah. Uh, it's very much an either or and story. S- and someone had pointed out uh, in using the example for something else, it was like, well, that's this is why they have Grey Jedi and gray, why Grey Jedi were such a an in-between space. And the nerds uh, for Star Wars were basically like, oh, you can't have that. That doesn't exist. It's not a thing. George Lucas didn't I mean, support it. Blah, blah, blah. But I mean, really, if you think about it from a societal standpoint, you're going to have that. Right. I and that mean, was the general. thing. It was like, uh, I'm reading this thing as a um, nerd, mm-hmm. lore nerd. I'm like, well, having seen the, seri- the Clone Wars series, there are a number of characters that are in this space. Uh, well, they're it, filling in the gaps between what right. the films do is what it, essentially And it resonates doing. as like a, as a parent because it's, uh, I see such a, such an entrapment of you, you want to be good. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you're not good, then you're bad or you're evil. Right. Uh, when in fact life, and I think we've, we've elaborated this on episodes in the past, um, if you can't find a way to navigate yourself in between that gray space, the gray space is reality. Mm-hmm. I think you want to always be striving for, obviously, I'm a good person, uh, good morals and good teachings. You, you want to get there. Yeah. But the reality of life in politics, in parenting, in a friend, in your relationship, um, there's gray space, yeah. your acceptance uh, in your place as sometimes it's not just right or wrong. Sometimes you have to shoot the gap. Yep. Uh, so it was funny to see this online argument about how you ca- there's no such thing as the, the gray Jedi. There's yeah. no such thing as the middle space. It's here well, or Maybe here. from a fantasy standpoint, you could probably get away with that. And right, and for that the was most the part, the it regular like, movie series has for right? some of these people, uh, and I think for some of these people, it's uh, like I, no, uh, my life. I need to see that you're either good or you're bad, mm-hmm. uh, because that that's the kind of support I need. Because reality is so many shades of gray that I need to know that in this place where I go to get away from reality that there is good fighting evil. Right. Uh, and to have an online argument with that there was, no, no, this exists, this space in between. Uh, it's a, It was funny to see. It's, a, it's okay, guys. I mean, the reality is it happens. Like in, Well, that's kind of funny because weird. last night my daughter wanted to watch, I think it's like a few years old, <clears throat> The Descendants or Descendants. Uh, Disney Descendants is a Disney. Um, I want to say it's a movie series or several shows, and it's basically like <clears throat> all of the evil queens and all kids. Of, the kids. It's the kids of those yes. people, okay, okay. And, um, and like the all the evil people live in this area that they can't get out of, and they want revenge, of course, on the good folks. Right, right, so, right. Um, it was very much a good. Ver- I mean, it's t- very typical of a right. Disney film, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good versus evil kind of a thing, right? But I think that that just lends well to a fantasy world. Sure. Well, it tells good stories. Story. I think yeah, yeah, when yeah. you look to heroes and villains, yeah, it doesn't. It gets when you're trying to teach lessons, certainly that are translatable to children, or even when you're looking for an escape. You need to, like, 100% right. But don't you think, though, 100% right. the ones that are more interesting are the ones that have that gray area, like right. Deadpool? Wolverine? Yeah, I mean, they... Yeah. Like, those stories ones are that way the, more interesting. I, and I think that's probably <clears throat> why those are so... Um, as long as they're told in the right way, mm-hmm. I think that's why those are so... Um, not sought after. I'm I'm a loss for the words, but why they they're so grasped upon by an audience. Yeah. Uh, Mal from Serenity is one of those characters that like uh, is told at the beginning of the story. As far as uh, that's Firefly is told as like a he's a good he does good from the from the get go, 
Uh, but when things get to the shit, uh, he'll he rides the gray mm. in defense of the crew or the mission at hand in order to support the greater cause. Right. Uh, and it's one of those characters that, when told right, because you don't want someone that flip flops uh, for no purpose or reason, right. as long as there's a code, you know, Deadpool. Yeah. He. I mean, he, he has this uh, thing where he's it's a revenge kind of a right. thing, which is negative. It might be abrasive, but you can tell that there's the good part an of underlying him. good perspective yeah, at yeah. the heart of the choice model right. or whatever yeah. it is you're going to use. Yeah. That's uh, all fascinating. Yeah. Hmm. It was funny to see. So I had to, anyway, Star Wars. Yeah. So anyway, if you ever get a chance... Uh, so far, it reads pretty good. I haven't gotten very far into. Is it, it. a I'm not what, a very, what? Like, what's the genre? Is it um, like it's his just story? Talking, yeah, it's like a, his story. It's uh, living my dorky dreams and staying metal, um, hmm. and uh, it's called Forever Nerdy from Brian Brian Posehn. So, if you're uh, interested in Brian Posehn or comedy or was funny he stuff, your class or I think he was in a couple. He was in my. He might have been like two or three years ahead of me really yeah Mm. but uh i knew who he was for sure and i know i talked to him a couple times really Uh, yeah yeah wow but yeah and you didn't know then right i mean you just knew was he funny do you recall he's just kind of goofy he was just a goofy guy Mm. um um and you didn't know and then you kind of oh like oh brian posein's doing stand-up oh that's cool you know i don't think i've seen an entire show of his uh, but I've seen the clips. He's yeah. funny, and in like his, he, he's filler, got a shtick. Filler kinda. roles. He's kind of yeah. He has sort of a shtick that yeah. he's sort of the uh, uh, like degenerate sort yeah. of shtick that he has. Yeah, um, for sure. But he's funny. Um, but anyway, I just thought I'd bring that up. I uh, the fact that we got his book at the Dollar Tree for a dollar just kind of cracked me up. Made you laugh. Yeah. Yeah. See, he's making me laugh, and I only had to buy his book for a buck. <laughs> right. Hopefully, I wonder what his cut of that buck is. I, I, I wonder did the publisher just go? We got to get rid of these books. Never mind. I don't know. Yeah. Just, I, uh, where are we going to dump these books? Send in the a, lake or send them a nickel? No, we can probably sell them to the to, Dollar Tree. Yeah. I mean, they probably sold them to, if the Dollar Tree selling them for a dollar. You know they are making some money on it, so they probably bought them for fifty cents. Probably a piece. Yeah. So that's, we're making bank. Yeah, we're doubling our. Yeah, do it. So anyway, but yeah, no, it should be. I mean, it should be interesting. And the foreword is from Patton Oswalt. So. Right, another nerd. Yes, Star Wars nerd. <clears throat> yeah, another nerd in general. He's funny. I like him a you lot. You were not a Star Wars guy, though, right? I probably I just totally dis- over. No, no, I did do with I, all that uh, Star Wars. Don't shit. dislike Star Wars. In fact, uh, I but remember. But you like Mandalorian. Oh, absolutely. I okay. I very much remember going and seeing the original Star Wars as a kid at the theater. I that I will always remember that. And I enjoyed this the original 3 series. Mm-hmm. Um it's just I don't live around a bunch of people who enjoy Star Wars as I mean I enjoy it. I'm just not hardcore into it. So I I live with these people that aren't really into it at all. Mm-hmm. And so like finding the time when you're not with these people that don't give a shit about it to like watch it is difficult. So does everyone in your house enjoy or has seen the Mandalorian? No, I'm the only one. I watched really? that on the okay. side. Well, in then fact, that would probably be a hard sell. Yeah, no, I watched the Mandalorian like this is before the COVID shutdown, but at the office at my I would go on my walk and I would come back and watch the show for like half an hour. Oh. Okay. So that's how I got through the series was literally watching it on my phone. So the so the the season seven thing of the Clone Wars was something like I said they came out with later. I had not watched it because I was going to re binge the entire. There are six seasons prior. I had not seen all of them, but I'm mm-hmm. like, well, I'll do it just so I have a refresher, and then I'll go right into season seven. So I binged the six seasons prior, and while everyone was gone, I caught up to, and I think on Friday I started season. Sunday, I started season seven, and I ripped through, uh, they're 20 to 30 minutes episodes a piece. Uh Uh, I would put the storytelling 
the character development of season seven Clone Wars as a cartoon above the last three episodes of movies hmm. of the Star Wars series. Well, they, it was so good, and it leads into the. There are a lot of like niblets and drops that. Uh, are points of reference that are coming up in the Mandalorian. Oh, interesting. Uh, so the the stuff about the war and how the guy, the blacks, the dark saber that mm-hmm. the um, Moff Gideon has at the, uh, he rips out of the TIE fighter. Uh, that all has a history hmm. that all has backstory inside the Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels. Uh, stuff that I had missed. Yeah. Yeah. It was like well, a bunch of little pieces, like kind of all filled in place that I hadn't realized I had missed. Amazing storytelling. Well, the Amazing. thing for me was like, okay, like I, they have a cartoon series. Like that doesn't feel to me like a a strong way to do like a Star Wars series. It felt like it was okay. It's a kids. You would think. Yeah, I, I am one hundred percent there. And you so would think. I didn't take much stock in it because it's sort of like eh, it's a, like okay, it's a kids show. It can't be that there. It can't be that good. Mm. You know, it's it's probably not for an adult mm-hmm. kind of a thing. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that I don't watch cartoons, but like a Star Wars cartoon, like I don't know, it just doesn't seem like it's mm, like necessary watch. And then I see you and Jason Moore. Uh, hashtag hey Jason. Hey, how are you? Um, talking about it in the hangout, and I'm like, mm, maybe I should watch that. You could probably get away with s- the season seven as a stand, not ha- necessarily have to watch the entire Clone Wars series. You could probably get away with just watching this last season seven. I mean, if I'm gonna watch it, I'm gonna watch it. Oh, then yeah, season one's a little slow. I'll be honest, but uh, it's it, God. It's, it fills in a bunch of gaps. Yeah, I bet. Uh, I mean, I just never considered. So Clone Wars, do I, is there like, do I have to watch the other one or Clone Wars for, first? Or So <laughs> so here we go. It, this is where I, the other part I get bogged down in is you start talking about all these different series and when to watch them and do you need to watch them in, in, a, in a specific cadence. Uh, I'm going to like get confused it's and be a lot like, eh. it's a, it's certainly well it's not as complicated as probably watching the marvel oh, story stuff yeah uh see now those i'll just go back and watch by release date but i i did pick out and having watched the clone wars right yeah. and then i'm like well i'm gonna uh, and then getting into season seven and then i'm like well now i've got some free time so i just started the first couple episodes of rebels uh-huh. and there are a number of drops that also tie into, uh, have you seen Solo, the movie Solo? No. Okay. <laughs> so there are references. This is the problem. To same, like, niblets. Okay. The amount of integration uh, Pretty impressive. is impressive. Yeah. It is very impressive. And right. I'm sh- it's not on the complexity of making sure that you're in sequence with the Marvel storyline. Yeah. But you could get away with watching the... I kind of feel like if you're just going to start with the series, you just watch the series and right. You just watch it. There's and enough you go to there. The other one. There's enough there which you wouldn't necessarily, you know, Phantom Menace uh I have to admit. Let me let me just say this. I have to admit mentally I have a hard time wrapping my head around the fact that there are now prequels. So it's like the first 3, those were the the right. those were the law. Right, those right. were those were the shit. Those right. were what happened. Yes. Well, then you got prequels. Now it's like so. I'm going back to the past to watch what's going to end up happening in the future, and then the fact that they renamed the original Star Wars to A New Hope. I mean, it's just it, it's right. like it's very uh, hard to wrap my head around. I know that sounds really it, dumb. Yeah. But it's like it makes me sort of lose much interest in other stuff like especially with the newer films Mm -hmm. it's sort of like well where does this i don't even know where does this all fit into the everything else i don't know and yeah i mean i'm not saying i've seen all of the films yeah except the solo and the newer star wars uh what about Uh, rogue one did i see rogue one i might have seen it i don't remember okay i think that's a good one too but it's sort of like i don't 
I mean, I, I start to lose myself, uh, my, or my self interest in like, where am I in the series? Right. I have no idea. Yeah. And you're not alone. Cause I, I rattled off. Like I totally nerd after I finished the season seven, I nerded out to Venus. I'm uh-huh. like, this was really amazing. And I ripped off like a, a good fucking mini essay. Did she uh, and roll her eyes and be like, <sighs> yeah, she, when she came back on Monday or Tuesday, <laughs> she was like, I'm tired of hearing like, about it. <laughs> I saw your thing. I didn't really know what you were talking about. <laughs> I, I didn't really get it. And well, I'm like, I'm, well, it turns out in reflection, I was a little bit wrong. Blah, 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 and I think it's still like her eyes fucking rolled back in her head. Like <sighs> whatever nerd. Well, and the, the part of it is too, like the character retention for me, a lot of times it's like, Wait, that guy, he was in what? Where does he, I don't understand. Like, right. Uh, you know, and then you got the different series happening and the Mandalorian, and you got right. like, yeah, yeah. And so it's like, I just, I don't know where, I never fully understand where I'm expected to, kn- I don't know how I'm supposed to know where I'm supposed to be within the series or parts of the series when I'm watching something in particular. I can, I or can does that, that even matter? I don't even know. I mean, I think as long as you're just watching it and then enjoying the show, either you enjoy it or whatever, right. and some parts are just relatable to other things, and that's okay. Yeah, I think, and I think, well, I think that's true for anyone telling any story, right? It's like, if but you it's bet, a very you, convoluted thing. Suddenly, you start with three, then you've got three that were before it, and then you have some add-ons after it, and now you have the series that sort of fits in who knows yeah. where, and the Mandalorian, and. It's like it, it becomes very, yeah. uh, it's very broad and like right. I don't really understand where I am when I'm in the universe of that. I, uh, okay. In, in, in so any sort of timeline. Let's put it this way. I think you would be, it's a lot like when someone asked me, could I just watch Infinity War and Endgame without yeah. seeing all the Marvel movies? And the answer is Yes. It well, I think be, if it, you right? can't do that, you've done a disservice to the film you've just right. made. But would those two movies together be extremely entertaining on their own, on their face? Y- yes. Would you be better served as far as from a storytelling perspective in having seen some of the other movies that led into it? Absolutely. But how do you know? That's what I'm saying. Because I mean, you have you... me. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, unless you do research, I mean, it's hard enough to like find something that you're entertained with. Right. But to have to like put thought process and, and whatever into like figuring out what do I need to watch first. Right. It's very, uh, you're putting a lot on the viewer really, unless you're just saying, uh, t- here's I a think, bunch of movies, yeah, take them all I, at face value. I think that if you are interested as, if they're telling the story right, and I think this goes for any medium, I think if your if your book is written right, if your uh, if your play is told in the right way, or your songs are the right way, or your your album, your movie is told or TV show is told in a manner in which you capture your viewer, you will you will do the homework. Uh, I think but, uh, in, in me telling you that there is. Uh, if I told you that the two most interesting characters in probably the entire Star Wars saga are Darth Maul and Ahsoka Tano, <laughs> okay, so who you've never seen, don't even know who that is, right? I mean, never heard. Uh, I mean, I know who Darth Maul is, and but. you watch the first set, right? You know, right? Yeah. And if I told you that the two, he is probably one of the most interesting and well told thought out story arcs not luke yeah. not darth vader yeah uh but darth maul uh-huh. throughout the entire saga uh and you watch the first set of episodes of clone wars and you you're either you're waiting for it or the the storytelling doesn't capture you in a way that you you know then you just walk out and, yeah. I, and you just be like what's the deal with darth maul and now i'll just fucking brain dump on you <laughs> <laughs> and tell you. Well, I no or so Katano. It's not for way. a lack of want. Right. Let's put it that way. But I think I'm the homework the homework it's like an it's an addiction thing. It, you will do the homework if they tell it to the point that it grabs your but heart. If you're watching a TV series, like 
Okay, a show that's a show. They are going to going to um, lay out a show in succession, right? And they are going to show you exactly what they want you to see. And that show could be jumping around in a timeline, Lost, or any number of shows that do this kind of thing. Right. They're going to show you bits and pieces of what it is they want you to know. And you don't know why the hell you're doing that at the time. So did you do, so speaking of Lost, yeah. did you know that they had outside the TV show stuff that tied into the TV show? Maybe. And I don't, I they mean, had at the like time, a whole augmented reality stuff that was based off of uh, the airlines and whatnot that you could do and surf that you could use to help put together parts of the story. I don't think I knew that. You know, see? Oh. <laughs> well, I mean, how would you know that, though? I mean, well, clearly you're not a fan. Oh, come on. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you watch the show, it's not like they're talking about this stuff. I mean, it's not like that I'm aware of. Not directly, but all of the references outside the TV show were mm. used inside it. It all had to do with like the airlines and the air. Oh, I mean, I was interested in the DARPA stuff. I remember they had like a too. website for the DARPA yeah. and all that. And I remember being fascinated, like somebody went through the trouble of doing all this yeah. for the show. Like Fucking this is nuts. nuts. But I mean, the the show is a series, so they're going to, they're going to give you exactly what they want. The thing of it is with the Star Wars thing is they they haven't really done that, right? You got this hunk and then you had to go to here and then you went back over here. Yeah. And then there was like some stuff that sort of fit in the crevices of the other things. And then, oh, by the way, here's a series yeah. that sort of interties somewhere, but like where I don't know. And then there's this two cartoon series that I really do want to watch. Yeah. And I'm not saying that it, like I'm mad or whatever. It's just, right. it's, it becomes confusing and a little bit muddied about what did it have, when should I be watching this? Should I have seen something before I saw that? Do I need to watch yeah. everything prior to that first? But you or could, can I just pick it up and watch it and just enjoy it or not? I but mean, you it have like, with The Mandalorian, right? Yeah. So yeah. I think there's probably certainly some psychology there. That's it, true. And that is... Uh, if I can get you engaged uh, to the point to where you're a fan of whatever it is I'm putting out there, yeah. that you start up a conversation uh, with other participants, uh, that will keep you in a marketplace, a Star Wars marketplace, Lost marketplace, a uh, Star Trek marketplace, where... Where whatever it is I have as far as a monetary buy-in that keeps you interested enough that you will engage in a community that keeps you in an echo chamber. It's like, well, uh, I don't know where that that fucking weird ass lightsaber is came from. Uh, foo or argonaut? Like, what's the deal with the lightsaber? Oh, well, it first shows up in fucking. Uh, it was belonged to <laughs> a, a, the first uh, Mandalorian Jedi, uh -huh. and he made it. Uh, and then it goes in, and you see it in Clone Wars. Was there a story there? Well, I can't spoil it for you. Yeah. But if you watch the Clone Wars, that's where you pick up history as far as what's being mentioned in The Mandalorian. Yeah. Well, fucking, I started watching Clone Wars, and fucking, how did, what the, what the fuck was it supposed to do with Darth Maul? Okay, wait. If you want to walk back the story far. See, that's the problem. Right. That's, what I'm, that's exactly what I I'm could talking get about. You the, I could get you all of the stuff I know, but it, it's not a matter of that, that somebody can get me that information. It's that the fact that the series or the the discombobulation of it right. uh, can make it frustrating on a viewer because- they want to be tied into the show. They want to understand what's happening, but they're getting parts of things that maybe that were in something they should have seen before right? or whatever. And that's frustrating as a viewer. Like, right. I'm like, is uh, that, is, I wonder then yeah. and in seeing that, is that, uh, cause I see what you're talking about yeah. and I wonder if it's almost a crossroads difference between our generation because Star Wars uh, just to pick a date Star Wars started in the 70s yeah so it's it's in for the scope of the storytelling you can't you're never gonna get it's not instantaneous it's not a binge it's not a brain dump yeah right uh, but in our current culture and our current <laughs> entertainment capabilities yeah. we have uh, you know instantaneous season binging 
available to us on things like Netflix. Uh, certainly Mandalorian it wasn't because they trickled it. But when you have archived seasons available to you, uh, you know, and you could just put off not watching a certain series for six months and then you watch all of House of Cards in the span of, you know, 72 hours or something. <laughs> oh, God. Right. Ouch. Yeah. Uh, it's almost like, well, uh, I can see your point. It's like it gets hard to, like, know where the sequence is when some of the things that we're used to in the in our current day and age, uh, we're used to getting an entire... Uh, yeah. Stranger Things would probably be a, a great example. Mm-hmm. It's like, uh, I don't have to go far back to as far as years or uh, the amount of spaces to digest to know what I need to know to know about all the things I need to do about Stranger Things. Right. Uh, well, that's a but linear, all, that's a all, linear series right. as well, though. But could you watch any particular season of Stranger Things without watching the, the first season? Yeah. Probably. You would, but, you but would not know. You would a be lot at a loss, yeah. but because it's told within the last five years, you don't have. To, you're not at a detriment. Now, yeah. uh, will our grandkids have that problem? Probably, it'd be the same thing, right? The length of time between season one and what's coming in season three is going to span probably five to six years. Yeah. Uh, will there be a movie? Who the fuck knows? You know, but we're you know the sequencing starts to get. I'm trying to think of something that's current. See, the Marvel stuff is already hard the because Marvel, there's like what I, thirty fucking movies. It's for Marvel. those two things the most that are the most frustrating as a potential viewer. That doesn't come and you know someone like me that doesn't go watch them when they come out in the theater, but is interested, right. but doesn't really have someone to go to the theater to watch them with, and then ends up having to watch them on their own. Lord of the Rings is too small. Yeah, Hobbit, three and three. Yeah, and I haven't watched the Hobbit yet either. I gotta see that. Uh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh. I mean, the only thing I can liken it to is, and and this is where I do put in the effort, is in music. Okay. No. Oh. So for me personally, like I'm a, I love music. Um, I listen to a lot of old punk rock stuff still, mm-hmm. but that old punk rock is like an archaeological dig into new punk rock because the people that are associated with the punk rock of the bands of the past that I really like have moved forward into other bands over time and like created other music. And so Without even knowing, without knowing, uh, how do I put this? Without knowing these members of these bands that have moved on to other bands or that were in bands that I, mm-hmm. I didn't even know. Like I didn't really do the homework back in the day. But as I get older, I do a little bit more homework. Like, oh shit, they are in that band too. Like I didn't even know they were. Mm. In, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's sort of like, uh, like I end up doing homework on. Oh, this guy. Oh, he's in that band and that band too. Mm. Like these are two bands that I've been listening to for a long. I didn't even realize he was in both of those bands. Right. Um, it's very very similar to music, but I do end up doing uh, my due diligence on the music side mm-hmm. because I love finding new music and I'm probably more more uh, at, m- probably more willing to do that in the music genre than mm-hmm. I am in the film genre. Yeah. Um, just because I think in the film genre, it's a little bit different with storylines and things like that. It's more, right. a little bit more complex in my mind, but, yeah. uh, the music side is just more interesting because I find like, oh, that guy moved from that band and they, and they formed this band that, with pieces of those guys. And, and then they ended up doing this pr- project and, oh, that's all good music too. And like, fuck, I didn't even know he was in that band, hmm. you know, that kind of stuff. So speaking of music. <laughs> <laughs> Not to jump so Kim, rails, but when Kim gets here, well, yeah, we're still in music. Okay. So when Kim hashtag hi Kim, when we get here, so I came out before we started recording, and yeah. I was singing a song. Yeah. Uh, it was the King George "You'll Be Back" from Hamilton, and I and I don't <laughs> think you knew what I was talking about. First of all, I was I was in the I came in the garage and I was setting up some stuff before the show. And I hear this music, and w- w- did I hear a bunch of people singing in there, too? We were all, Venus, Piper, and I were okay. all singing it. So I heard a lot of singing, along with some 
some very raucous music. Yes. And was trying to figure out what it was, and I didn't recognize it at all. So when you came out, you were singing yeah. it? Yeah. La da 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 Yes. <laughs> so I was like, I, what are you doing? And I said Hamilton, and you didn't know what I was talking I about. I don't okay. know what that is. So is that a movie? It was the Broadway play. Okay. That everyone, God, it's like the, you can't get tickets for it kind of thing. Broadway play, amazing. Lin- I may have heard Manuel of it. Manuel Miranda. It, is that a, the, one of the actors? Yeah. Anyway. Oh. Uh, is there a movie? It yeah. came out on uh, Disney, recorded the Broadway show. Uh-huh. Uh, and then put it out on Disney Plus last. Oh, we, well, it'd be two weeks. I want to say now, though, two weeks back, that my wife and my daughter have talked about watching it. It. Uh. So. And I have no idea. Um, I'm not a musical guy. I'm not. A, <laughs> oh, I'm not a play guy. I'm not a musical guy. Uh, at all. I was thoroughly entertained and blown away when yeah. Piper and I went to uh, on her eighth grade graduation trip to New York and we saw The Lion King on Broadway. Okay. Absolutely blown away. Now was that is that different to see a show like that live uh, when it's a musical versus watching something that could be a movie? Yes. With, for me it was. I, I would because not- I think I could sit through a live production of something like that much more readily than I, I would be more entertained, way more happy to sit through something if I was sitting in an audience watching it on a stage versus just watching a film of a musical. Cause I think yes, it's not I representative ag- I of agree. anything. Uh, and so here's the, here's usually if I were to, if someone were to say, we're going to watch the Broadway version of Lion King on Disney plus, I'd yeah. be like, I'm out. Yeah. I have no inter, it's just not my thing. Yeah. Uh, when Venus and, uh, her dad or the kids go to like the Broadway stuff here or uh, off Broadway stuff here in SAC, the plays, the, uh, it's not my thing. I don't really care. Yeah. Um, having been in a position on an eighth grade trip to see a show live on Broadway. Yeah. Um, and the set pieces, the professionalism, uh, the acting, all of that stuff, I was absolutely, 100%, without a doubt, amazed and entertained yeah. and blown away. Uh, will I go and see stuff here in SAC? Probably still not. <laughs> uh, but it gave me a an admiration and respect for uh-huh. the stuff that goes on in Broadway. So it was, it kind of like, uh, it put like a bee in my bonnet. Yeah. Uh, now I've been, lit for years and years now, I've been hearing this stuff about the Hamilton show. Uh-huh. Uh, Alexander Hamilton is like the so the like the founding father kind of thing. Yeah. So you okay, know, that period piece. Uh, can't get tickets for it. Sold out. Uh, the guy is a fucking genius, wonder kind when it comes to how he designed the, the songs and whatnot. But it's just one of those things where I'm not obviously I'm not going to New York. Uh, Kim had said that they had a show in. Uh, San Francisco or Oakland, and mm-hmm. she took the, I believe she took the girls to see it. Oh. Uh, so she's seen it local as far as California goes. Uh, she's a huge fan. Okay. But that was just a bridge too far for me. It was never going to happen. But Disney recorded it uh-huh. and put it out on Disney Plus a week and a half back. Okay. Uh, so I'm like. So that gives me some reference onto what it is. Right. Because I really. So it, it's no a idea. play, uh-huh. but it's filmed on the. Uh, on a Broadway stage, so okay. it's not like the. Um, so you're just watching the play. It's not live action. Yeah. You're watching the play. Yeah. So it's a stage, moving parts, actors coming in and off of a stage. Yeah. Uh, no CGI, no shit like that. Yeah. Um. So we watched it. We sat down and we watched it. Uh. It is. Um. If you, it's a very most of the songs are less. Um. Don't be like opera or even Lion King. It's not like, it's not that kind of shit. It is Beastie Boys style rap. Oh. It is fucking amazeballs. Fascinating. It is, was absolutely, I was blown away. And, (sighs) okay. uh, So I'm still reeling from the feels that I got from being uh, in DC on that trip. Yeah. And like the history, uh, you know, George Washington, founding fathers. 
um, you know, being in places where the nation was fought for and bloodshed over, you know, uh, just there's yeah. some, uh, if you're yeah. a history nerd. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the way that he told that story through the verse uh, was like, I will be, it wasn't like, um, what it was the one that I told you to go watch with Hugh Jackman? The circus one. Yeah. Uh, it is not like that. If you, if you, please watch this. Okay, I will. I'll uh, watch it. And if you are not entertained by the style and verse in which he delivered, ever the whole cast delivers okay. the musicals, Yeah. Um, I will be seriously surprised because it is. I'm willing to check it out. Right up your alley. All it's right. not punk. But it is, yeah. if you are a fan of Beastie Boys and like hot rap, octet style, like, yeah. you will love this shit. Okay. Uh, that's what we were singing when I came out. <laughs> okay. I didn't recognize it at all. Yeah. At all. So. We're at time though. Already? Uh, yeah. Anyway. Uh, so the girls haven't seen it? Not that I'm aware of. I mean, I, I haven't... Might not be a data thing, but everyone no, in, in my house, and I will say this full disclosure, I was, right off the bat, I was engaged. Okay. Um, I'll check it out. Uh, it, it looked like Venus was kind of like, eh, on not so much yeah. on the fence during it. Uh, Piper really liked it. I really liked it. Xander, I don't know, but he was entertained, I would say. But Venus, out of all of us, seemed to least... Meh take to about it. it. Yeah. But as you well heard, uh I played the song and everyone it, the tar- three tar- of tar- us tar- all knew the words to the song. Yeah. So that could be just a little bit of peer pressure from my daughter onto my wife. Mm-hmm. But she knew the words to the song. Well, I'll mention it because it would have been one of those things where it was like I've heard them say Hamilton. I've heard my wife say it and I think I've I don't know if my daughter necessarily wanted to see it or not. I don't know. Yeah. But I've heard someone say that. And and I was I'm I'm operating under the assumption that if those two end up watching it, mm-hmm. I will also end up watching it anyway. So if if you're saying that, then I will yeah. just watch From it. From someone that was looking and hoping yeah. that the Hamilton experience was going to be close to uh or better than the word of mouth and also near what I had experienced in watching The Lion King on Broadway, mm-hmm. I was not let down and impressed. Yeah. Uh, the, I believe that the uh, accolades and everything that has been afforded to that cast and him as the creator of it, all well earned. Uh, absolutely bar none. Well, I will say this for myself personally. Um, my daughter has done several plays, so I've enjoyed doing that. Um, and also, we've done a couple music circus uh, plays. Yes, music circus. Yeah. That's the Sacramento. I, thing. I've done a couple of those too, like seeing Greece and a couple things. Yeah, and that's always fun. It's it's a hot tent down in Sacramento, but you know it's fine. Yes, yeah. Um, if if no one else was going, I would never go just buy a fucking ticket for that. Absolutely. But other people are like, "We're gonna go see blah blah. Do you want to go?" And I'd be like, uh, "Sure." And right. then just go, you know, and this, I'm always amazed actually with like the set dressing and how they tackle problems regarding how the stage is laid out. Cause that's a yep. big circle. Yes. That's a, that's a theater in the circle. The, the music, music circus or whatever. Mm. That's a theater around the stage. So they, the way they tackle some of these problems and deal, I'm fascinated by the technical side of right. it. Right. Uh, in addition to the show That was part of the itself. thing that blew me away with the Lion yeah. King stuff. Yeah. It was like the set pieces and how they were doing some of the puppeteering. Like, but, what? But don't put grease on the fucking movie or if it's a film that's a musical, fuck. I, <laughs> I don't want to watch it. Typically, I, I'm not interested at all. Most of those I will are, watch them, but no. I, it's not, it's like, why? It's okay, we're, we're, we're doing a film, and then suddenly someone's breaking out in the song. This doesn't happen. Oh, uh, we've got one that I can't stand. Uh, it's uh, God. 
I can, it's, like it's one of the newer ones. That's all musical stuff. It's got fucking Dancing Queen in it. And like girl, I'm thinking of like uh, uh, it just blows. Me. High School Musical for fuck's sake, like that kind oh, of shit. That doesn't just, get played much. Just shoot me in the brain. Yeah. Just put the me bubble out of my gum misery. stuff. I I can't. I, I, yeah. Although I can recite all the goddamn songs because I've seen it way too many too times. Too many times. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway. All right. Yeah, we're good. Is this it? That's it. We have reached the end, folks. Yes, and I also have uh, withdrawn my candidacy for president. <laughs> so you ran just about as I long ran, as I ran for an hour and ten minutes. We'll never know any of the stats because I don't think there was any. I mean, unless right. when this hits the airwaves, the yeah. pod waves tomorrow yeah. or tonight, there may be a flurry of yeah. voting, crazy voting stuff that happens. Right, there could be in in the hour of time that people. Listen, do you realize what you're going to create a stir? I made a... And the other problem is is that this show is perpetually available. Right. <laughs> so oh, it's 2020. <laughs> it's... I forgot to file my forms for my candidacy for president of the oh, United States. I'm sure that's I'll expensive. Work on. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's tons. I didn't get my signature. You have to sell the RS. Oh, fuck no. <laughs> is it worth it? <laughs> no. Okay. Not even close. We didn't even get to Saturday. No, we didn't. Absolutely not. I was thinking about that. I'm like... We didn't even talk about Saturday. We didn't have to. Oh, Fuck. Gosh. We ain't selling. Uh, we, let, real quick, we'll talk about Saturday. Jesus Christ. Wow. Holy shit. That was fast. My right. wife doesn't want to know. I told my wife, I said, it was very spirited driving, and you would have not been happy. <laughs> yeah. So, That's pretty and on that note, we should take it off. We'll, we'll end it here. All right. Return the cart. Wash, wash your ass. Wash your hands. And do, wear the mask. Wear the mask and do the kindness. Register the kindness. to vote. Res, please register to register vote. Register to vote. We'll catch you next Unless week. Unless you're going to vote for Kanye. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. See or you. me, because I'm, I'm well, no re- longer running. Vote for Jason, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Just write him in, foo. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Catch Take you next easy. week. Bye.